Hello, everyone. Uh, God is guiding each and every one of us so that we may be strong in the Lord and we may rejoice and be happy in whatever situation we may be in. Yes, people, they may say, hey, you are abnormal. How can you be happy in such a time like this? Yes, it may be that the situation may be so big and occupying the space of the heart and the mind of the people, but them who believe in the word of God, they are able to rejoice in such times like this so that they can always give hope and guide many others in the world of overcoming challenges that we may have in life. Uh, we are going to look at the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 3. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning was the first day. I'm so thankful because God really wants us to distinguish between light and darkness. So light means I have hope. Light means I am rejoicing. Light means that I am the one who is living in the righteousness and in the holiness of God. How about darkness? Darkness is the world of lust, the world of hatred, the world of many things that are, cannot be comprehended, neither can they be understood in the world of the spirit. But now God wants us to put a clear line. So what is a clear line? A clear line is to divide between light and day. And not only that, to divide between light and darkness. So light means Jesus Christ is the author of light. Darkness means Satan is the author of darkness. But now, God wants us to put a clear line. A clear line here means many people, they believe in the word of God. At the same time, they want to believe in their thoughts. Many people, they want to believe in the word of God. At the same time, they want to believe in their feelings. And now this is a mixture. And in this mixture, people cannot stand strong in the world of the spirit. They can never stand strong in the world of God. So they will be affected. They will be disturbed. They will not know how to do in such a world. That's why there must be a line. So when man works, God does not work. When you think about the prodigal son, the prodigal son, when he saw his father, he thought, ah, he, my father is somehow foolish. My father is not doing well. Then let me receive a portion that belongs to me, and then I will go to the far country. I will go to the far country, and now in that far country, I will come back to show my father that I am able to do well. I am better than him. I can be the best. Therefore, he stretched forth his hand and told, Hey, Father, give me the portion that befalleth to me. And then the father gave to him. So when the father gave to him, he turned everything to money that was very much portable, and then he went to the far country. When he went to the far country, then he used those things and misused, lived a riotous type of life. A riotous type of life means living a life without God, living a life without thinking of God, living a life without even meditating upon the word of God at all, being far from the word of God. Then in such a situation, people they may think I'm doing well, I am so wise, I'm brighter than my father, but when they have reached their limit, when now they cannot know what to do, then that time they find themselves that they have wasted all that which they had in riotous living. After wasting, then what next? Now they want to bring back. They want to pay up. They want to reinstate, to restore that which they have lost. But now it is impossible with ourselves. We cannot restore. We cannot make it come back. Therefore, what do we do? <laughs> that time, 
we have to think like this. Let me try to do something so that I can restore that which I lost. The kingdom of God that man had lost in going against God cannot be restored by man doing something. Adam and Eve, they lost that kingdom by going against God, receiving the heart of the devil. When they receive the heart of the devil, there is no way they can go back to that kingdom by doing something. I want to inform our fellow Christians that we are the people that cannot go to heaven because we have done something. We cannot go to heaven because we have kept the law. We cannot go to heaven because we have been so right and we have been doing so well and we have been so bright in doing the things of God. God wants us to know clearly that with us it is impossible. Trying to do ministry with ourselves, it is impossible. Try to do the work of God within our knowledge, within our efforts, it is impossible. That's why we have to think of one more thing. I have tried. I have failed. So ministry cannot be done by ourselves. The work of God cannot be done by ourselves. And that's why we have to know, if I try to do it, then eventually I will fail. And now these things happened many times in my life. These things happened many times in my life. Whenever I, I tried to do, and now I tried to put my efforts, I tried to do well, then what was the end result? The end result was pain. The end result was just sorrow. The end result was just shame. And then, could they help me? They could not help me. Then, I had to discover one thing. Hey, with me, it is impossible. Then what should I do? Come on, there is church. There is a servant of God. Humble yourself. Humble your heart. Come back to him, and then he will guide you. He will help you. I'm telling you, when we share our problems with the church, when we share our problems with the servant of God, then from that point on, then there is peace. There is hope. There is love. There is the care of God. There is the care of the church. There is the care of the servant of God. But now, why are we so painful? We are so painful because we want to do it by ourselves. We want to do it for our own name. We want to do it so that we may seem to be excellent. That is foolish mind of doing the things of God. When I think of how God is leading my life, then I'm really very thankful. How is he leading my life? He's leading my life to know that by me, it is impossible. It is impossible. With me, I cannot do anything. Even though I try to do, not, nothing can come out. Therefore, wisdom comes from the church. Wisdom comes from the servant of God. And that's why I have to lean upon the servant of God. I have to lean upon the church. I have to lean upon brothers and sisters. Because with me, it is impossible. Therefore, God is gracing them that have known I cannot make it. God is gracing them that have known that it is impossible with me. It can never materialize. I don't have any wisdom. I don't have any wisdom at all. And as you know, people, they have what is called IQ. And then IQ, maybe my IQ may be 100. I don't know exactly. But my IQ, which is 100, cannot match an IQ which goes to 1,000. Therefore, for me to receive 1,000 IQ, then I need 10 more people to be with me. I need 10 more people to help me. I need 20 more people to assist me because with me, it is impossible. So God really wants us to know our situation. Like the earth, which was without form. Like the earth, which was void. Like the earth, which was bound and covered with darkness. It could not come out of it by itself. And that's why the Almighty God is having mercy upon us to help us, to guide us, and to show us his great love. In this situation, what can we say? In this situation, what can we say? In this situation, what can we do? How ah, we cannot do anything. 
In this situation, we are not able to do anything. We are difficult. We are, it is impossible. Then we have to surrender before God. Oh, Lord, I cannot make it. It is impossible. Then what should I do? Come on, come to me. The Lord will shout to us, come to me. The church will shout to us, come to me. The servant of God will shout to us, come to me. Brothers and sisters will say, come. And now we are suffering because we don't know who we are. We are suffering because we don't know that we are lacking. We are not able. We cannot make it. <laughs> Them who accept how evil, how wicked, how lacking they are, they are able to receive grace. But now the world is struggling. The world is trying up and down, trying to do this and that. But even though the world is trying to do this and that, the world cannot make it. The world is impossible for the world to make it. Imagine you are in darkness and you are trying to do something inside darkness. How will you make it? It is impossible. Inside darkness, we are just knocking things. Inside darkness, we are just stumbling. Inside darkness, we are just hurting ourselves. Inside darkness, we are just suffering. That's why the Lord must bring light. And now he said, let there be light. And there was light. Remember, this light could have to divide. Between light and darkness. And now the Bible is saying like this. In verse 4. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day. And darkness he called night. And evening and the morning were the first day. So how is God counting? God is counting from evening and morning. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So the counting of God is not from day to night. No, it is from night to day. It is from sin to righteousness. It is from hell to heaven. It is from darkness to light. It is from hopelessness to hope. When I think of how God is counting, then it is totally different. So why is God counting like this? God count, is counting like this because man who is hopeless, man who cannot do something, God is working for him to bring him in the night, in the light. God is bringing him in the hope. Today, when you think of ourselves, we are people who are born in sin. We were born in sin. Through who? Through Adam. Everybody that is born is born with sin. Is a sinner. Not because they have committed sin. Not because they have done anything wrong. But now they have been born in darkness. They have been born in sin. And that's what the Bible is saying. From darkness to light. From evening to morning. Meaning what? From sin to righteousness. From darkness to light. From Satan to God. So this is how God is working for us. God is telling us, hey, when you are born, you are born a sinner. When you are born, you are born a cursed man. When you are born, you are born going to hellfire. And then I thought sometimes I can be a good man. If I try to keep the law, then I'm good. If I do well, then I'm good. But the Bible is telling me, no. Even though you try to keep the law, still you are evil. Even though you try to keep the law, you are still a sinner. Even though you try to keep the law, you are still so awkward. There is nothing good in you. You are an idiot. Well, then I did not know this. I thought, wow, if I keep the law, I'm a good man. If I do well, then I'm good. But I'm telling you, the more I keep the law, the more I do good, the more I deviate from God. So many times, I was having this mind, I can do ministry. So many times, I was having this mind, I can do well. If I decide to do well, I can do. But God have taught me that whatever well things, or whatever good things I did, those things that I did well, they made me to go far from God. Those things that I did well, they made me to go far from the church. Those things that I did well made me to go far from the servant of God. Therefore, doing well, trying to keep the law, means 
I don't want you, God. I don't need you. I want to go to heaven by myself. I can go. If I keep the law, I will go. If I keep the law, I will do well. I don't need Jesus. Ah, I never knew this. These things were making me to go far from God. Doing well. Yes, people, they are proud when they do well. But I'm telling you, doing well means I don't need any assistance. I don't need any help. I don't need the servant of God. I don't need the church. That's why I want to do well. I want to be the best. Hey, why am I going away from the grace of God? The devil cheated me many times. Hey, Nelson, you can do well. Try to do it. Try to do it. The result was pain. Try to do it. Try to do it. The result was sorrow. And now, I really hated this mind of the devil. Try to do it. Try to do it. You can do well. You can keep the law. You can be a good man. What is this? You don't need God. You don't need Jesus. You can go to heaven by yourself. If you put effort, you can go. I'm telling you, if you have such a child which does not need you in the house, if you have a child that does not need you, then that child is no longer your child. So many people, they think, them who do well, they are good people. But I'm telling you, them who do well, they have the heart of Satan. I'm sorry to say this, but them who do well, they are next to Satan. They don't need any help. They don't need grace. They don't need the help of the church. They don't need the help of the servant of God. They don't need the help of brothers. Such people, they can never share their hearts with other people. Such people, they are always very lonely. Such people, they cannot do anything in the church well. They always go against. They always break churches. They always do bad things. Why? Because they trust in themselves. That's why them who are weak, yes, they can be laughed at. Them who are lacking, yes, they can be mocked. Them who are weak, they can be despised. But such people, they always listen. They always follow. They always get guidance. And they always get grace, the grace of God. Weak people, lacking people, them who cannot do well, them who are even like handicapped, such people, they always carry their hands. I cannot make it, Lord. I am the one who needs the grace. Church, have mercy on me. Servant of God, have mercy on me. What can I do? I cannot do anything. Please have mercy on me. Guide me. Help me. And such people, they can always be led to receive much more grace of God. Bible is telling us that when the world was in a problem, when the world was in acute problem, what could they do? In the book of Romans chapter 3, Bible is talking to us and telling us that man has failed. Man has failed. How has he failed? He has failed because he cannot do anything. Romans chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. The Bible is talking to us and telling us, now in the world of men trying to do something, in the world of men trying to keep the law, in the world of men trying to be somebody, I'm telling you what they are able to is that the Bible says there is none righteous. So in the book of Psalm chapter 14, from heaven God saw the earth and God saw mankind. He was looking at them. Hey, who is he that is doing well? Who is he that is righteous? Who is he that is keeping the law? When God saw mankind in the book of Psalms 14, verse 1, 2, 3, then what did God see? God saw how man was against God. How man went against God. And that man was unprofitable. That man could not understand. And that man was unrighteous. Why? Because of his works. The goodness of man made man unrighteous. The works of men made men unrighteous. And whatever man thought he could do well made him unrighteous. And that's why I'm saying like this, our goodness. Trying to keep the law. Trying to do so well. Being a good man. Doing well. 
all these things are making us to go against God. Are making us not to receive the heart of God wholeheartedly. But now God, who is guiding us? God, who is helping us? How is he helping us? He is helping us to know that whatever we are able to do, in verse 23, Bible is saying, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Man have sinned. Man have gone against God. Then when did man sin? Bible say all have sinned. We sinned long time ago. We sinned already. We had fallen short of the glory of God. That which man is able to do is only but to commit sin. That which man is able to do is only to go against God. That which man is able to do is only but to that filthy thing coming out of them. And that's why the Bible is talking to us and telling us in verse 13, the life of man. How is the life of man in verse 13? Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues they have used this it. And poison of asp is under their lips. Now, the Bible is telling us the things of man whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And the feet, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. This is how the Bible is telling us. This is the world of man, how they are living so filthy, so dirty, and against God completely. So what have they done? In verse 23, all have sinned, all. Not, there is no exception. Every human being, whoever it be, whoever it may be, whoever, the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of glory of God. So we are all fallen. We are all fallen. And there is none righteous. No, not even one. And that is the Bible. But now people, they may think, ah, but if I try to keep the law, I can do well. Okay, try to keep the law. Still, you are unrighteous. But now if I do well, I can be good. Okay, try to do well. You may be good. But I'm telling you, there is none good. There is none righteous. No, not one under the sun. That is what the Bible is telling us. That's why we need to know who I am. We need to know who we are. We are people who are filthy, dirty, and idiots of the world. And then God is telling us this so that we may surrender. He wants us to surrender. He wants us to apologize. He wants us to ask God, have mercy on us. We are the people who cannot do it. At such a time like this, the world is crying. The world is asking God, please, what can we do with this virus? It is so much deadly, so much terrible, and now has made every human being to be tensed, to be, ter to be tensed, terrified, and they don't know how to do. Everywhere in every nation in the world, the world is now trying to hide out. The world is trying to run away. The, the world is trying to do A, B, C, D. But what we have to know is, death is appointed, and it is appointed unto every man. Death is appointed unto every man. And now after death, there is judgment. Then how will we be judged after we have died? Even though we run away, we cannot run away from death. One time comes, it will come. Whatever happens, it will happen. That which kills us will kill us. But I am telling you that there is what is called the appointed time of God. And that appointed time of God, even though you want to run away, even though you want to do this and that, you can never run away. The only solution to be assured of our future is to believe in Jesus. That's why God sent Jesus. And when he came into this world, what did he do for us? In Isaiah chapter 53, the Bible is talking to us. Let's see Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53 verse 4, 5 and 6 I will read. Surely he hath borne our grief. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. When you look at the Bible, the Bible is stating to us clearly and telling us for sure our life is like a sheep which has gone astray. Our life is that sheep which have gone astray. And every one of us, the Bible says, every one of us, we have turned everyone to his own way. Everyone, without exception. Everyone has gone to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. My iniquity, your iniquity, is on who? Is on Jesus. The Bible is telling us that my iniquity, your iniquity, our iniquity is on him. He is, it is on Jesus. That's why we don't need to look at ourselves. What can we do? Nothing. We cannot help ourselves. We are the people who cannot do anything for ourselves. For our survival, God must help us. For our survival, God must work it out. For our survival, God must come in into that survival. And that's why... God, if you cannot help humankind, if you cannot help human race, then they are all doomed. They are all doomed and they have no other way apart from only you. In the case of sin also, we cannot come out of sin because we have prayed too much. We cannot come out of sin because we have kept the law. We cannot come out of sin because we have been good men. No. Even though we do ministry very well, still, if you have sin, that sin you cannot wash it by yourself. Even though you are excellent in ABCD, but only by the works of God we can succeed in washing away our sin. The sin of mankind, the Bible is saying, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. My sin, your sin has been put on Jesus. And that's why you believing on him is our salvation. Believing that Jesus Christ has done it, that is our salvation. But now many people, they don't want to believe, they want to believe in themselves. And now that is how awkward we are. In the Bible, we have 1 Corinthians. So 1 Corinthians, the Bible is talking to us about our salvation. Chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. How did we live our life? In verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Verse 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Bible is telling us what we used to be in the world of darkness and what we are in the world of light. So we have to separate between light and darkness, between day and night, between Satan and God between heaven and hell. There must be a distinction. There must be a line. If you used to be in darkness, should you continue to be in darkness when, even though you are in light? That is not true. When light comes, light is so powerful than the darkness, and their darkness will move. So many Christians, they say, I am saved, but I'm still a sinner. What does it mean? I am in light, but I'm still darkness. What is that? Cannot make sense. If you are in light, you are in light. If you are in darkness, you are in darkness. There must be a distinction. There must be a line. There is no way you can be in light and in darkness at the same time. I am saved a sinner. I am saved a sinner. What is that? If you are a sinner, you are a sinner. If you are saved, you are saved. If you are in heaven, you are in heaven. If you are in hellfire, you are in hellfire. If you belong to God, you belong to God. If you belong to Satan, you belong to Satan. Not that I sometimes I belong to Satan... That means I am in darkness, I am a sinner. Sometimes I belong to God, or oh, I am saved. That is nothing, can never be like that. That is confusion. Christianity must have a line. Christians should have a line. And having a line means 
Either you are saved or you are a sinner. You belong to Satan or you belong to God. You are in darkness or you are in the light. Put a line and God will bless you when you have a line. Are you saved? Then you have no sin. And if you have sin, then you are not saved. Put a line. And line means that is the way to believe exactly in the works of our Lord Jesus. He took our sins. He went to the cross. He washed them all. And he said, it is finished. There should be a line in your heart and also in your spiritual life to distinguish between light and darkness, salvation and sinful world. May God bless you. Thank you.